Hello and welcome to Home Worship with us at the Ark. We're reading through the Gospel of Mark at the moment, but let's begin with prayer. Father God, we are at home here with you. We are washed by Jesus. We are inspired by your Holy Spirit. You are a wise and loving Father. Teach us and help us as we rest in your presence. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our Bible reading for this week is from Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man, and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed." As we read through Mark, this gospel aims to answer the question, a very important question, who is Jesus? In our Bible reading, in the story that we read today, we see that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God, and evil, and sin, and darkness, all of these things submit before him. Jesus has come to set us free, to bring order and peace into our world. In our reading, Jesus comes face to face with a man who is being tormented by many, a legion of demons. A legion was a Roman military unit that consisted of five to six thousand soldiers. So that's a lot. This poor man is oppressed by a significant force. But they recognize straight away when Jesus comes that he has authority over them and that they have no chance of standing against him. And after Jesus cast them out, he says to the man, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth. Our reading is a little surprising and confronting. We have the man who's living with many, many demons oppressing him. There are the 2,000 pigs that fly off the edge of a cliff. Jesus says no when the man asked to go home with him, and we might wonder why. We also might wonder why Jesus traveled to this place in the first place. The Decapolis is not one of the Jewish territories, so Jesus is traveling far out of his own home territory. It's an alliance of 10 independent cities that each had their own government. There were some Jews in that area, but they were very much a minority. And they probably would have been quite uncomfortable with the culture of the people in that place. In the story, we read about pigs, which were unclean for Jewish people to have or to eat. We also read about the tombs, which were also unclean places. And the townsfolk didn't even want Jesus there. As soon as he caused any trouble for them, they asked him to leave. So why is he there? Well, the answer is that Jesus has come to push back the darkness. Jesus has come to bring light and order and peace in our world. He's come to bring order out of the chaos. 
Our God is a God of order and peace. At the beginning, in Genesis, we read how God brought order out of the chaos in the beginning. He brought light and the darkness. He separated the sky from the earth. He separated the land from the sea. God brings order. And here in the story, we see that Jesus comes to bring order into our world as well. Jesus steps into enemy territory. He confronts a significant evil force and it cowers before him. Without even raising a sweat, Jesus defeats these evil spirits and they are thrown into the sea. When the townsfolk come out to see what had happened, they find this tortured man who they had tried to restrain so many times before, but it was not humanly possible. And they see him there completely at peace and calmly sitting at Jesus' feet. Mark tells this story and it kind of reads like a horror film. After the crossing of the stormy waters, Jesus and the disciples have just come through a storm on the Sea of Galilee. They are immediately confronted by this possessed man, not possessed by one, but thousands of evil spirits. We get the impression that Jesus has traveled far from civilization. He's out in the wild areas and this man is clearly very wild. This poor man lives like an animal. He's been treated like an animal by the townsfolk. They've tried to chain him up, but he's torn the chains apart and he lives out in the hills, in the graveyards amongst the dead and he calls out at night and he scratches himself and cuts himself with sharp stones. If you're afraid, that's probably only natural. This is a terrifying story. And this is what evil is about. It wants us to drag us into death and darkness and pain and sorrow, where there is weeping and fear and hurt. Although, thankfully, we don't experience demon possession like this very much in Australia, this darkness is still all around us. This evil is circling, trying to drag us into the darkness. We face temptation and anger. We face fear and anxiety, shame and heartbreak, violent thoughts, greed and selfishness within ourselves. These things torment us. They want to bring us into the darkness and drag us down. Of course, these evils are not so obvious, but that's kind of part of the point. They don't want us to realize that they are so wrong. In fact, the wrong thing or the sinful thing often seems very attractive at the time. There is this saying that people say is, why why are all the good things in life either illegal or they're bad for your health? Well, this story shows that evil is not harmless. It exposes the reality of these things. The path that they lead us down is a dead end. It's not going to lead us to any place good. But Jesus, on the other hand, has come to bring order and peace and freedom. Our God is a loving God who brings light into our darkness. With Jesus, there is nothing to be afraid of. He can confront all of these things and they must bow before him. We see that his power is vastly superior. There's no real struggle. There's no struggle between good and evil or darkness and light. The light simply banishes it. The evil spirits are terrified in Jesus' presence. They know who he is and they try to play games with him, but in the end, they are the ones who are defeated. If we look closely at this story, we see that there is a dramatic struggle, but Jesus doesn't even break a sweat. Firstly, the evil spirits call out Jesus' name. It was kind of believed in the time of Jesus that if you knew something or someone's name, then you had some power over them. They also call on God's name and they beg Jesus not to torture them. They evade Jesus' questions when he asks them, what is their name? And they say, legion, for we are many. And when he asks them to leave, they beg to go into the pigs. They are using every tactic that they can to try to manipulate Jesus. But clearly, Jesus is in enemy territory. He's in this strange place, surrounded by this incredibly powerful, hostile, evil force. But Jesus wins. He gives no ground. Without having to name them, he takes command over them. In the end, the pigs end up running away into the ocean and the demons end up in the place they didn't want to go, banished from the area and back into the oceans, which represent chaos. Jesus doesn't need any special techniques. He doesn't do any kind of exorcism. He simply moves into the space and evil disappears before him and is cast out. 
In this story, we see that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. No human being, no evil spirit can oppose him. He pushes back the darkness. He brings life and order. He cleanses the unclean. He brings peace and healing where there was absolutely no hope before. This is a new beginning. As in Genesis, God brought light in the darkness and order out of the chaos. Well, now Jesus is bringing light into our darkness. He's bringing order into the chaos of our worlds. Notice that it's only the beginning. Jesus is doing something new. This is the start of a new kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And we realize that this change is going to come with some resistance. In fact, it creates this turbulence in our world, this storm, as things reconfigure and everything changes. In Mark, we've been taking notice of the response of different people whenever Jesus does something. The crowds watch what he does and they're amazed, for example. Well, in this story, we see the response of the man who was healed. Clearly, he's very happy with Jesus and he wants to go with him. Of course, we understand that this is such a positive response. But the people in the town don't share that positivity. They are terrified by Jesus and they ask him to leave. They were actually happier with the presence of this horrible, evil presence than they were with Jesus himself. We also see, well, we don't hear from the disciples in this story um, because it's not really about them. But just in the previous verses, in the verses from the previous chapter, the, the disciples witnessed Jesus' power when he calmed the storm in the ocean. And they too were terrified. They, they said, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So Jesus' power, whilst it is good, is also terrifying. We see that Jesus brings light and order and he doesn't ask our permission. He brings the storm of change as he reorders our world. The full restoration is still to come when Jesus returns, but before then, we are in this time of testing. Will we join Jesus in his kingdom? Will we accept his order and his peace? Or would we rather cling to the darkness of this world? It is a time of testing for us when we want to work out what do we really want and who do we want to submit to? To Jesus or to the chaos of this world? This is why Jesus doesn't allow the man to go with him. It's not the right time. One day when all of the world is made new, he will be able to be with Jesus if he wants to. But for now, we're still in this in-between time. It really stands out to me in the story because it's the first time Jesus says no to anyone. He, said, he agrees to the terms that the, when the townsfolk ask him to leave, he goes. And when the evil spirits ask to go into the pigs, he allows that. But when the man wants to go with Jesus, which is a good, the first good request, Jesus says no. This is because Jesus wants him to go out into the world and to bear witness to the goodness and the light that he has brought. There are people in his hometown who need to know about Jesus and they need to decide who they're going to be with. Are they going to side with the light or with the darkness? So this is where we live. We're in the storm of restoration, the beginning of the end of all things. We are forgiven and set free, but we're not yet made completely new. All of our sin and shame is gone, washed away by the blood of Jesus, and yet we struggle with temptation. The kingdom of God is here, but also the kingdom of darkness. So Jesus comes into our hostile world to bring us peace. He comes without our asking. He doesn't need our permission because he's the Lord of heaven and earth. He comes to restore order in the chaos. He comes to show us a better way to live. He teaches us about true love and goodness. He teaches us to care for each other and that we lead by serving each other. He teaches us to give up the old ways of the world and to let go of the things that are holding us down and to embrace a new way to live. Later on in Mark, Jesus says to the crowds, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Like that person I talked about who thinks that all the good things in this world are illegal or bad for you, 
we need to learn that actually Jesus' way is better. He knows what's better for us. God has a good order and a peace and a freedom in store for us that is far better than we could imagine. He doesn't want to ruin our fun. He wants to set us free. Friends, there are evil forces in our world that are swirling around us and they want to tempt us back into chaos, into darkness, into death, into hurt, into pain. In fact, without Jesus, we are already part of that world. Like the man in the story, we are confused, we are afraid, we're tormented by our own sins, we are lost in this world. Perhaps we don't live in the tombs, but we are like the living dead. Maybe we don't look like animals, but we do often act like it. When Jesus comes to find us, he comes to save us. Jesus is our Lord and our Saviour. He comes to push away the darkness in your life and evil doesn't stand a chance. The guilt and the shame are washed away in his forgiveness and his grace. All of your sins were defeated on the cross. The anger and the hurt and the hatred in your life will give way to his love. It must. Your fear doesn't stand a chance because his perfect love drives out fear. When he moves in, evil moves out. Jesus is here to give you a new beginning. He's starting a new creation and you are part of that. If you will go with him, if you'll choose to take up your cross and follow Jesus and see where he leads you. In this world, we have trouble for a while. We have to face this difficulty and we need to be here standing as witnesses like that man, declaring what God has done for us in our lives. But we know that one day when Jesus returns, everything will be restored. And we know this because Jesus is Lord. He is our Saviour and our God. At this point in the service, I just want to encourage you, if you'd like to, to give your offerings to the Lord. It's good for us to give to God out of all the goodness that He's done for us. You may like to give electronically. Our bank account details are up on the screen now. Now let's spend some time in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, you sent Jesus to confront all the darkness and push back evil from our world. Bless your church as we embrace freedom and love. Help us as we join you in sharing Jesus with those around us and telling them what he has done for us. Bring to mind those people that we could bring here to worship. There are those who we may know who may be thinking of coming back to church or maybe they have questions about Jesus. Prompt us by your Spirit so that we might be able to say something or offer to bring them to worship or share our home worship video with them. We pray this week for our educators and students as school term begins for many. Bless the staff who work to train and equip. Give them the inspiration and the resources for their important work. Sustain them in the weeks to come as students return. We also pray for our Lutheran Church here in Australia and New Zealand as we face significant challenges. There is much division and frustration and hurt. May you bring the love and truth of Jesus to us that we may respect and love each other despite our different understandings. Help us to work together so that we might continue to serve one another and grow as Jesus' disciples here in this part of the world. Bless the ark as we continue to embrace our multicultural community and welcome people of different cultural backgrounds. May this ark be a place where all are welcome and where all find safety. May we find beauty and diversity and joy in the colours of our lives. All of these things and all the people we bring before you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'll leave the rest of this time of worship up to you. You might like to read um, over our Bible reading again. You might like to do some journaling or sing along to some of your favourite worship songs. Then when you're ready, you can close with the Lord's Prayer. Peace.